Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. There isn't quite so much to go through from this past weekend. Only IndyCar and Indy NXT from Portland, NASCAR from Darlington and Formula 2 and 3 from Monza. I'll also throw in a quick word about the Scandinavian TCR series that has failed to get off the ground in 2023. So make sure you subscribe and let's jump into the video. We start with IndyCar from Portland. All eyes were on Alex Palau to see if he could claim his second IndyCar championship before the final weekend at Laguna Seca. Well, spoilers, but he did, and in style. Graham Rahal must be cursed. This is his second pole star of 2023, and he still hasn't won a race. He sunk like a stone on the wrong strategy. Very disappointing for the veteran who hasn't won a race since 2017. This was a very clean race, a bit of a mess at the start. Where there were several incidents, a couple of cars went off at the start, Roman Grosjean was taken out again just to cap off his dreadful year, and last year's champion Will Power spun out. But otherwise, this was a very strategic race, and Alex Palau took the win and the championship. If it wasn't for the court case hanging over his head, Palau would have everything going for him. We still have one race to go at Laguna Seca with nothing much to play for, but it has been a fantastic IndyCar season once again. Indy NXT was also having its penultimate weekend at Portland. Chaos at the start as multiple cars made contact at the first corner, including championship leader Rasmussen. Christian Rasmussen did continue and was back up to sixth on lap six. Only 11 cars on the lead lap, so whatever happened, surviving guaranteed good points. That included rookie Jagger Jones, who spun from fourth with only a few laps left to go. Lewis Foster won again, but it might be too late for a title charge from him. Hunter McElroy and Jacob Abel were early victims of the first corner chaos, leaving Nolan Siegel in second and Christian Rasmussen fifth, the only top drivers to score decent points. Rasmussen has a 60-point lead with only the two races at Laguna second next weekend. Jamie Chadwick had her best race in sixth. She still has time to break for top ten. Formula 2 from Monza. This is the penultimate round and after all the championship contenders retired at Zandvoort, this was surely a chance at redemption for someone. Frederick Vesti burst into the lead of the sprint race and it's a lead he would not lose. Vesti survived an early safety car for Amory Cordille's stricken car, then another for the hopeless Roy Nassani. Frederick Vesti did a great job to hang on to the lead, but he would have been disappointed to see the ARTs pulling off some great overtakes to both climb into the top four. Still, Vesti closed the gap a little or so onto the feature race. What was Roman Stanek doing? Trying to squeeze Vesti into the wall, causing the title contender to crash. It was an amateur move by the Czech driver. I think Bortoletto might as well take his seat for the last round at Abu Dhabi. You just can't do that. Given Ayumu Iwaza was also having a bad weekend once again, the list of title contenders is getting ever shorter. After Leclerc had a scary moment spinning through the polystyrene at the first chicane, he too has had an awful year for dams. He brought out a second safety car. Then another massive crash as Zane Maloney got turned into the wall at high speed by Roy Nassani, another driver who shouldn't be there. A scary crash and another safety car. The race calmed down in the second half, Victor Martins retired, yet another title contender out. Kush Maney and Jack Crawford collided bringing out safety car number 4. And after the restart, Crawford would go off again, bringing out a virtual safety car. Awful race, broken up too many times by poor driving standards and safety cars. Oliver Behrman won the race, table chair hung on for third, and he now has a 25-point lead. Only Vesti can stop him at the final round at Abu Dhabi in November. Formula 3 was also at Monza, and this was the final round. Could anyone topple championship leader Gabriel Bortoletto? No. Certainly not Paul Aaron, who was spun at the start and took out the MP of Johnny Edgar, along with sending half the field to the grass in avoidance. Pepe Marti soon joined him on the sidelines and the top contenders were falling like dominoes in a hurricane. That was the championship over. Bortoletto wins. The MPs of Franco Colapinto and Marty Boyer kept swapping the lead in what may have been strategy or conflict, it was hard to tell. It was a good race, Colapinto took the win and the champion Bortoletto was second. We still had the feature race, sprint race winner Franco Colapinto retired on the first lap. Gregoire Saucy also retired with a puncture. He retired from both races at Monza. It has not been the Swiss driver's season. He deserves another year at this level. Pepe Marti retired in an almost identical race to race one. Joined by the Israeli driver Ido Cohen. 
Johnny Edgar managed to survive all the safety car restarts and took his first win on a very good weekend for MP Motorsport in Formula 3. Gabriel Bortoletto is your driver's champion and Prima win the team's title. I'm sure we will see some of these in Formula 2, others we may never see again. It was a good couple of races from Formula 3 to finish the season. Maybe too many safety cars, but otherwise entertaining. NASCAR from Darlington. The first race of the playoffs, of course. A pretty standard fare from NASCAR. A lot of crashes and carnage and a lot of playoff contenders in trouble. My highlight of the race was Ty Gibbs pushing Austin Sindrick round the track after they collided. Carl Larson took the win and is second in the standings as we head to Kansas. Finally, let's talk about the Scandinavian touring cars. Scandi TCR. They have made the bold decision to become the first national electric touring car series. A brave move considering the multiple electric failures dotting the landscape like incredibly flammable piles of rubbish. Well, I thought it was going to start this weekend. Turns out it's been delayed to 2024. We did some hot laps at Ring Nutstorp, but supply issues have meant they cannot put together a 12 car race. Scandinavian touring cars has suffered with small grids for a while but I guess only a few half-completed cars were not worth turning up for. A shame, I was looking forward to seeing the Teslas in action, but I have doubts this series will resurface in 2024, at least in this form. I have been wrong before, but we don't want another pure ETCR scenario. I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens next year. I will say, the cars look quite good. So that was all the action from the past weekend. My race of the weekend was the IndyCar once again. Great action from Portland. Next weekend we have the final round of both IndyCar and Indy NXT from Laguna Seca, WRC in Greece, World Endurance from Fuji, Formula Regional European and Euro Formula from the Red Bull Ring, DTM from Sashen Ring, and a few others around the world. So, quite a lot on next weekend. Make sure you subscribe for more motorsport. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.